but um, I want to talk more about why you are attempting to start this new movement in art uh, called, uh, it's fleeing me right now, abstract orderism. Yes. Um, so I see a lot of beauty in patterns and patterns exist, of course, both in nature as well as in man-made objects. And it rather disappointed me that throughout the 20th century, most abstract art was chaotic. It seemed to be more of a rebellion against tradition for rebellion's sake. And these kinds of abstract artists were trying to just express some raw, untamed emotion, which doesn't interest me at all, because I want art to be uplifting. I want it to be engaging to the human mind. I want people to be able to make sense of it and to derive some benefit from it in terms of their lives, how it improves their quality of life. So I'm quite fond of representational art as well. Uh, however, I'm not a painter. I'm more of a mathematician. So I can create objects using mathematical principles and objects that are complex and structured and interesting to look at and contemplate. Fractals are a great example of that. And a lot of my abstract orderism works are fractals. But the idea is abstract art doesn't have to be disordered. It doesn't have to be ugly. It can be beautiful. It can be systematic. It can be ornate. And that's what abstract orderism tries to bring about. Uh, what kinds of new ways of order, new types of beauty can be discovered and represented. And there are many possibilities for abstract orderism that haven't been tapped yet. Of course, with digital art, there are a lot of creative possibilities that wouldn't have been accessible in the past. Actually, to draw a geometric object precisely or to paint it precisely would have been a fairly uh, significant endeavor for uh, someone working in traditional media. Working in digital media, it's a lot easier. So the barriers to entry are lowered. But imagine what could happen with this art form, say, in three dimensions with holograms.